am Marissa. And I am Jordan. Today, in this year in history, Marissa will be discussing a topic from the year 1916. And what would that topic be, Marissa? Before I get into my topic, I wanted to do some clarifications for 1914. Oh yeah, those tidbits. <laughs> I called the movie 1917, 1914. Yeah, and I went along with it because I didn't think, I just knew it was 19-something and it was you World War I. You called it Dunkirk. One. Yeah, they called it Dunkirk. I, I knew I watched Dunkirk, not 1917. You did. That you thought it was 1914. I didn't question it because I was thinking, yeah, World War I, 19-something makes sense to me. So, yeah, we fucked that one up. And then I said Tsar Nicholas was murdered in 1917. You said... I argued and said, nope, it wasn't 1917, it was 1916. And we were both wrong. It was 1918. Yeah, but it's still my mind. It's like the Mandela effect to me. I don't know why I thought it was 1916. I think 1916 is when he was um, taken out of his... Uh, his role as czar? His role as czar from the uh, palace. Was that... Ni- I thought that was 19... <laughs> we're doing it again. <laughs> we're doing it again. We could. We have the computers in front of us. We could just simply look, but we don't want to waste time. But now we're wasting time. <laughs> Defeating okay. the purpose. But anyway, what's your topic about today, Marissa? Today I'm going to be talking about the Easter Rising, also known as the Easter Rebellion. Okay. You know anything about that? No, but it sounds like the bunny cakes. You were telling me about that. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you don't have them. But in England, we had like everyone had a, a, a Easter bunny cake pan. And I, when you said Easter Rising, and then what was the other one? The Easter Rebellion. Yeah, the Rebellion. Like how I don't want to go to church. So that's what I think about, about <laughs> Easter cakes and not wanting to go to church in the morning. What is it about? It was an armed insurrection in Ireland during Easter week in April of 1916. Okay, makes sense now. Whenever I'm learning about rebellions or uprisings, I always ask, like, why? Why did this happen? What was done to the people that made them finally say, I'm, I'm not going to take this anymore? Mm-hmm. And, you know, they go against the government. Yeah. So that's what I was looking at. I was like, why did the Irish finally say, fuck it, we're doing this? It actually goes way back, the conflict between Ireland and the English monarchy. One of the first known rebellions was in 1315, and it was with the Irish Bruce Wars. The Irish were trying to overthrow the English monarchy and install Edward Bruce from Scotland as king. And even though they had all these rebellions throughout the years, they always failed. (laughs) But the English monarchy would punish the Irish for what they've done. And they would remove Irish Catholics from their lands and emplace them with Protestant settlers from England and Scotland. That happened over the centuries. And because of the rebellions, there were laws put in place where Catholics couldn't vote, they couldn't hold government offices, and and they couldn't even practice certain professions. So you can imagine how... All of that can make people angry over the centuries. And even though it's like over the centuries, it's still stories that are told among family members. And then they also experience their own oppression. So having the stories from your family and then experiencing your own, that eventually is going to boil over. So the 1798 rebellion, although it wasn't successful, it still alarmed the British government. They decided to abolish the Irish parliament and govern directly from London. And the Act of Union in 1801 meant Ireland was going to send about 100 MPs to the United Kingdom Parliament. And MPs are members of Parliament. So if you're in America, it's like your senator or congressman. Yeah, I just know people say, I'm going to write my MP. Like if they're important. People say that? In England, yeah. Like snobby people that feel that that they matter. (laughs) Like I'm going to write my MP. If you actually mattered, you'd have the phone number. Yeah. Only rich people have access to that. So that was the time when the Union flag was created. So it had all the four countries. You know it. You're from there. The Union Jack. Yeah. So at this time as well, the majority of Catholics and Protestants in Ireland were in favor of the Act of Union. Protestants felt safer being part of a Protestant majority in the UK. So that's why they were okay with it. And the Catholics were okay with it because they thought they could get the... They thought they could get the laws abolished. That stopped them from voting and doing certain jobs, you know? You know what I mean? Yeah. Are you there? (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) And the Catholics were okay with it because they were enticed by the idea of having certain penal laws abolished once Ireland was fully part of the UK. But 
King George III refused to give the Catholics that. So the Catholics, they felt betrayed. They're like, you know, we agreed to be a part of this, hoping that they could get um, remove some laws. And then they're told no. And then it took years to actually get those laws repealed. And then it only benefited the middle classes because then Catholics had to pay a teenth. You know what a teenth is, right? Nope. Yes, you do. It's a kind of tax and it was to fund the Protestant Church of Ireland. So Catholics had to pay to fund the Church of the Protestants. Mm. But a lot of Catholics were poor. So I don't know. Imagine how they felt. Sounds like America today. Oh, and then also the government held a veto over the appointment of Catholic bishops. And then came the Great Hunger or the Famine of 1845. Ireland was struck with the potato blight. Mm. Blight means a fun, it's a fungus that gets onto plants and it destroys the plants. So that's what was happening to their potatoes. You're also known as Fistophotora infestans. What are you talking about? The Latin name for that. Oh, okay. Fungus. So the British government had driven poor Catholics off their land and the land was given to English landlords. So the Irish were left with a lot of bad soil. So they had to grow potatoes. Because mm -hmm. it's easy to guess to grow potatoes in that type of soil, and that's what they mostly ate was potatoes. So when you have something that's destroying what you're eating, yeah, that's what's going to happen? You're going to starve. It so, goes in all your soups. That's everything for you. So a million people died of starvation and disease, and as many more immigrated. So about another million people left Ireland, and they blamed the British government because even though they had some food. The British government was still shipping it out of Ireland to sell in the UK. So they didn't care that most of the Irish were going hungry. It was all about, we got to get this food out to sell it to the to the rest of the UK. Yeah. And that's in 1845 to 1851. That's way after William Wallace. <laughs> that was 1276. Did you, did you tell me to watch that for reference of this? No. Okay. Somebody did. And I was just like, I don't, that movie's not accurate. <laughs> Maybe your husband. Has he watched it? Yeah, he's seen it. I like the movie. It's an entertaining movie, but it's not no, accurate it's, whatsoever. <laughs> it's like Passion of the Christ. Yeah, Mel Gibson just kind of has his own bias. of. He's making part two, did you know? Passion of the Christ 2? Yes. The Resurrection? Yes, that's what it's called. What? Yes. <laughs> we joked about that like I know. 15 years ago. <laughs> like, didn't Family Guy do something on that too? Like, Yeah, what with the Chris yeah. Tucker? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell that to my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ to <laughs> crucify this <laughs> okay we're like way off topic yeah but it's relatable because we're talking about Catholics yeah I think I've done three religious references so far oh the Irish are going to be upset with us what are they going to do ask for their name back <laughs> I was brought up in a very strict Irish Catholic upbringing oh I was brought up in a strict Hispanic Catholic upbringing yeah so we can relate I think that's why I relate with Hispanic people yeah it's why I relate with Irish people because yeah. I'm always like I know your pain I haven't been religious for like over a decade and still Catholic guilt will always be with me till the day I die yeah I just it's something I can never shake I got rid of it I remember even when I was no longer religious I still wore a St. Christopher's cross because my mother gave it to me and it was like oh the bit superstitious and the superstitions what took most to get over because you're taught don't step over a broom don't walk around with one it shoe on one shoe Catholic. off it is it's Irish Catholic it, it changes they <laughs> they have different things they, they're superstitious about I think it goes as far as voodoo in the United States you know that's what is that like Haitian Catholic or what, it, what kind of there's also hoodoo yeah hoodoo there's so many different branches of Catholicism but the thing it has in common is it's superstitious and pop out lots of babies it's kind of universal Okay, back to my subject. So after the potato famine, nationalist groups started to pop up more, more and more. And they wanted to be their own country. They didn't want to be governed by the English monarchy anymore. And as more of those groups started to rise, the Irish also pushed for what they called the Home Rule, home rule Bill. Home Rule? Home Rule Bill. Like home and then rule? And then bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And what that meant is they'd be part of the UK, but they'd govern themselves. Yeah. And they tried passing it twice. It didn't go through. On the third time, it did go through. But World War One started to happen. So they put that on hold. Mm. 
And as World War I happened, people part of the nationalist groups thought, well, this is a great opportunity for us to take back our country because a lot of the soldiers are fighting in the war on the Western Front. And that's what they did. So the rising began on Easter Monday, April 24th, 1916, and it lasted for six days. And it was organized by the Irish Republican Brotherhood, members of the Irish Volunteers, the Irish Citizen Army, and 200 women of the Kumanambe. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Kumanam. I know. That is a weird looking word or a phrase or what is that? Three words and there's a little M and a big D. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to give you anything for pronouncing it incorrectly. I think you get a pass on that one. I hope so. Spell it out. No. That's what we do not do on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Just have to figure it out. It's spelled C-U-M-A-N-N. The second word is N A. The third word is little m, capitalized B-A-N. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't even begin to guess. Kumanamen. Hey, good job. But it's a woman organization. So. Okay. <laughs> so these groups, they seized important buildings in Dublin and proclaimed an Irish Republic. And the rising was supposed to happen all throughout Ireland, but it was so secretive that people who wanted to be part of the rebellion didn't even know what day it was going to happen yeah so it was unorganized so it took mostly part in dublin they're trying to be like if we let them know then the enemies are gonna yeah because they were seeking help from germany and and somebody in germany had sent them like twenty thousand weapons and a uh and one in the boat at the boat uh it's it's spelled a-u-d i don't know how to pronounce that out 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 yeah that sounds a bit like uh what's that show peaky blinders have you seen that show? I've seen a few episodes. Me too. I've only seen a few episodes, maybe two episodes ever. First two. And I think they talk about that. It was like weapons that were... Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and they found out about it and mm-hmm. they, the British government, they tried to seize it, but then... Um, well, according to the show, they found, spoiler alert, it's only the second episode though. I'm not giving away too much, but they found a uh, crate filled with all these weapons. It was mm-hmm. like a... They shipped the wrong thing or something, or they stole the wrong box or something. Now they have these military weapons, and the British government's looking for it. And the person who sent them that, he actually sunk the... So th- that's mm-hmm. historically accurate, then? Yeah, they, he sunk the boat so the British wouldn't get their hands on it. Wow. So, so nobody gets it. Yeah, so that's why they were, like, really secretive. Like, it was already, you know, kind of being ruined. <laughs> So the most important building they take in Dublin is the general post office. It was on a street that was the main street in the city. And of course, the British hear about it and they send thousands of troops to go and try to suppress the rising. The rebels are able to hold them off for at least six days. Um, The rebels would fight them on routes into the city center to slow down the British advancement. But it's the British army. At that time, you know, the British army was the best army in the world, right? Yeah, arguably. Okay, so, I mean, what are you going to do against that? Even though most of them are at war, they still have better weapons than you, and there's still more of them. Yeah. What the rebels were hoping would happen was that the public would become on their side. But the public was pissed off because they're causing all this destruction and death, and they're like, what are you doing? Yeah, and they weren't prepared for it. Yeah, and it's not like a general strike. So a general strike, even if it's a surprise general strike, and it's not coordinated... It's something that everyone agrees to do. And with this rising, the public didn't know about it. So imagine you're just a regular person and then suddenly mm-hmm. you're being shot at and you're like, what the yeah. hell's going on? Or if like today's politics, if like Antifa came along and said, we're going to do this and we're going to start blowing up police cars and stuff and all they go into the neighborhood. So you guys are with us, right? You're like, no. And then the police are thinking we're with them because they're on, they're representing us. Yeah. And that's what happened because civilians, 56% of the people that died were civilians, but they were shot by the British army because they thought they were rebels. So, I mean, if you're just standing there, you're yeah. like, what's going on? And then yeah. you're getting shot at. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not cool. They didn't tell them what day it was or what they were They didn't even tell the, the people that wanted to be a part of it what day it was. Yeah. So imagine you're just a regular citizen. Yeah. And it's just assuming that people are going to join in because this is what we all want. Yeah. I got you. So it lasted for six days. And then on... Saturday, April 29th, the rebels surrendered. And then after they surrendered, the country remained under martial law. Mm. So they arrested about 3,500 people. Most of them were let go, but 1,800 of them were sent to internment camps or prisons in Britain. 
and a little bit of tidbit. This is Marshall, M-A-R-T-I-A-L. I just think it's our duty to educate people as we go. Too many people spell Marshall, M-A-R-S-H-A-L-L, like Marshall Mathers, but it's not. <laughs> it's spelled differently. And it's a different meaning. if you don't know what martial law is, it's basically the government kind of will take over your city or town. Yeah. And it's supposed to be temporary, but they enforce certain rules and laws within that time period. So, you know, you can't leave your house after eight or you can't do this, do that. So. It's never a good thing. No, it's not. Most of the leaders of the rising were executed, but they were executed like really fast. So this ended on April 29th. And they were already starting executions on May 3rd. Whoa. So they arrested 1,800 people, sent them to internment camps and prison. And then they start executing leaders by May 3rd. And they're executing by firing squad. Sounds a lot like my episode, the last one. Oh, yeah. Taking the, the leaders. Yeah, just a year earlier. I mean, in genocide. Um, yeah, it's executing the leaders. Take them out first. It's like a military strategy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And But see... Remember I said the public was pissed off at the rebels? Yeah. Well, since the British government was doing everything so fast and, and killing people so fast, the public started to get upset and they started to sympathize with the rebels. And then they had the martial law up until the end of the year of 1916. And this happened at the beginning of the year of 1916. So you could see why that resentment would build up and they'd start to side with the rebels. Yeah. And they start to sympathize with them. They're the underdogs. The rebels. What did you say, though? The un- the underdogs. I guess maybe they started to see him like that. Yeah. And so that resentment towards the British, it grew. And it started to build more support for the rebels and the movement for Irish independence. So in 1918, in the general election to the Parliament of the United Kingdom, the Irish political group Sinn Féin, whose goal was to establish a republic, they won a majority of Irish seats. So then Sinn Féin members, they refused to sit in the UK Parliament. And then in January 1919, they met in Dublin and created a single chamber of parliament and declared Ireland's independence. And then the Irish Republican Army, or the IRA, then launched a guerrilla warfare against the British government. And there was a ceasefire in 1921, and both sides signed a treaty in December that called for the establishment of the Irish Free State, a self-governing nation of the British Commonwealth. Six northern counties opted out of the Free State and remained with the United Kingdom. So the fully independent Republic of Ireland, consisting of the 26 counties in the southern and western part of the island, it was formally proclaimed on Easter Monday, April 18th, 1949. That Cranberry song, Zombie, is about this topic. Oh, is it? Yeah, I remember she's like... It's the same old theme since 1916 in your head. What did she say? It's the same old theme since 1916 in your head. Oh, okay. They're still fighting with the tanks and the bombs and the bombs and the guns in your head. In your head, they are dying. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's about what you're talking about. And when you said 1916, that kind of popped up in my head. Little bit of (laughs) tidbit. One of the leaders actually wasn't executed. His name is Amon de Valera. His name is what got my attention because de Valera, it's a Spanish name. I was like, what's he doing? In yeah, Ireland? but he was actually American. He was born in America. His yeah. mom was Sp- or his father was Spanish and his mom was Irish. Mm. His father died when he was two years old. So his mom sent him to Ireland to live with her brother. He's going to have some weird tattoos like shamrocks and spider webs. And- Did they have those back then? I don't know. I'm sure. It's just funny because like American Irish people are more prideful than Irish Irish. Like they get shamrocks and they let you know they're Irish when you're in America in Boston and stuff. Yeah. And I was kind of scared to do this topic because actual Irish people from Ireland. Yeah. They don't really like outsiders or foreigners really giving their opinion on their history because... Yeah. It's still fresh in a lot of people's mind because it didn't just end in 1916 or 1949. Into the 70s, right? Into the 80s. And in 1988, the band Megadeth, they were playing in Northern Ireland. Yeah. And Dave Mustaine, oh my God, he was such an idiot. He dedicated one of his songs to, quote unquote, the cause. Oh, yeah. And that's a euphemism for the IRA. Mm. And just the year before, the IRA had... um, done like 300 bombings oh yeah so it wasn't something that was that long ago so once he said that 
the crowd he was playing to immediately separated Protestants on one side, Catholics on the other. A riot was about to happen and they had to call the police. That was in the 80s? That was in 1988. And wow. then the next day, the band Megadeth had to be escorted out of Northern Ireland in a bulletproof bus because they were going to fucking kill them. Have they been back to Ireland since? I have no idea. I didn't check. But I was kind of... I didn't want people to think that I was putting my dumb American opinion on Irish history. It was just something yeah. I learned. It was an incident I learned about and I wanted to share it with you. So. Yeah, I've never known about that. But yeah, he's not a person... We're not people to have a strong opinion on that, let he, alone him. Yeah, and, and he's he tried like saying like because he was um, Irish. It's like no, dude, you're fucking American. Like, <laughs> but he's got red hair. <laughs> he has Irish pride. <laughs> Look at my my red locks. <laughs> like you, you, you haven't lived what the Irish people have lived through. So you, you know. Yeah. I didn't want to be like Dave Mustaine. <laughs> Mustaine's not even an Irish name. What is that? Where is that? He oh. is Irish. Well, he's Irish, but his name is like... That's probably not even his real name, is it? Oh, it is. <laughs> well, it's an English name, but I have an English name. It says and I'm it's Irish. Arabic in origin. Yeah. But it did reach England following the Norman conquest of 1066. Today's episode is filled with titbits. <laughs> So that's my story. I liked it. Thanks. <laughs> so if I had to pick a side, I would by default be on the Catholic side. I found out um, my grandparents are Irish, but from Scotland, which is weird because my granddad, he had a heavy Scottish accent, but his name's Patrick Kennedy. And I was like, wait a minute. So are we Irish or Scottish? Of course, Patrick Kennedy is like the Jose Gonzalez of Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most stereotypical name i just saw him as a scottish man because he had a scottish accent and he's from scotland but they of course went from uh londonberry ireland which is a very northern part migrated to scotland spent a few generations there and then came to england and so i thought i was scottish not irish but i'm actually very irish when i did my ancestry i'm 38 percent, so it's a good chunk oh you did your dna yeah yeah mostly from northern ireland what company did you do it with? Ancestry. Oh. Is that the bad one? Oh, I thought the uh, other one was the Mormon one. The guy who bought, who owns Blackwater just bought Ancestry. Yeah. What does that mean? Blackwater is a um, hired military. Oh, sounds like something from the dark web. It's not good. <laughs> yeah. So what are we going to do with all my information? I don't know. Harvest all your, your DNA information. Yeah. Well. I wanted to do mine, but um, you know I'm paranoid. Yeah, you're afraid. But it's like if somebody, I'm nobody, and if somebody wanted my DNA, they could easily get in. So you're not going to be one of those people that get mad when you find out you're a certain race and then kick everything? And Why would I get mad? I'm joking. There's people who, <laughs> they're like white supremacists, have found out they're like 8% African, Ugh. and they're in denial, <laughs> and they want to kill themselves. <laughs> Shut up. That's happened so many times, where people found out they've got like, you know, white supremacists, or people who are even like... um latin american and they find out they're oh you're actually like 48 percent puerto rican and they get mad and they want to kill everyone and they hate themselves that is hilarious it is <laughs> it's not the best app for or the best uh, website for racists if you're a racist you probably don't want to know your lineage you'll hate yourself which is good you should hate yourself if you're a racist <laughs> well i guess if i had to choose a side of course catholic yeah well the thing is um i don't like either <laughs> to be honest <laughs> I mean, they both have problems. Yeah. Well, I was, you know, raised Catholic. Yeah, but I mean, when both of you are wrong, <laughs> <laughs> why would you pick a side? I don't know. This could be a very divisive episode. <sighs> don't forget to rate us. Yeah. Give <laughs> Whichever us, app you're using. <laughs> give us that five-star review. And if you don't want to give us a five-star review, um, contact us directly at thisyearinhistorypodcast at gmail.com. And don't rate us. But if you're going to give us five stars or above, Go and rate us. You know what? Just give us five stars. And then if you have a complaint, just write your complaint in the Yeah, but we need the five stars. The comment. Because that's all we have so far. We don't want to ruin that streak. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, we're all about um, making you happy. And if we can improve in any way, we're happy to do that. Someone may have said something like, oh, they, they banter too much about politics or religion. Well, that's what we're talking well, about. <laughs> fuck it <laughs> isn't that what the today's topic is it politics is and religion? it is it's nothing but politics and religion so how do we avoid that 
<laughs> Sorry, I mean, it is what it is. And that's what history is, usually. It's nothing but politics and religion, and people don't, they'll get upset, like, I don't want to hear about politics. I don't want to know the truth about the past. It's like, sorry, bud, it's nothing but that. But yeah, also, we have uh, bonus episodes on our Patreon, and if you want to be a patron, you can get to hear those, because Marissa's got some really good ones coming up. Oh, yeah, I got, um, I'm doing how checking candy when trick-or-treating, how that came about. Like, yeah. You know, like, there's razors, there's poison. Yeah. And so <laughs> like, there's... where did that come from? Why do people believe this? So there's some things that happened, and we could talk to you about that. And So look for that next week. Yeah. And but... then I'm doing, I think, a murder mystery one that happened in Germany. Yeah. On a couple of weeks, so. And I'm doing a mystery one, which will be an actual episode, the next one I do, next week. All right. So, so what else happened in 1916? February 3rd, 1916. Parliament buildings in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada burned down. On September 6th, the first true supermarket, the Piggly Wiggly, is opened by Clarence Saunders in Memphis, Tennessee. Still open today, and I do not miss it. In April 1916, the toggle light switch is invented by William J. Newton and Morris Goldberg. On September 29th, American oil tycoon John D. Rockefeller becomes the world's first billionaire. May 16th, 1916, United States Marines invade the Dominican Republic for no good reason. (laughs) On October 5th, Adolf Hitler is wounded in the left thigh by an exploding shell during the Battle of Somme. That makes me a little bit happy. That was a bad day for him. Well, that's all the things that happened in 1916. We'll see you in 1917. Bye!